Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna do an overview of the stand-up rider forklift. Check this out. Everyone, in this episode, we're gonna do a training overview of a stand-up rider forklift. Uh, now the first thing uh, I want to do, first of all, I want to thank Storm Creek Apparel in Minnesota. They're the ones that are allowing us to use their warehouse and their forklift. Uh, and then the next piece, as you've seen in any of our training videos, I am not an expert. I do not claim to be. Uh, I have run a forklift. Uh, I've got, I feel I'm pretty experienced on them, but I'm also interested to get comments from you for tips and tricks. But this is going to be a very entry level overview. Uh, the biggest way to learn, you know, I tell this on other videos, you're not going to watch this video nor any other video on YouTube and it's going to make you a good operator. The best way is just getting seat time. So get in that machine and practice, practice, practice. So first thing, let's go ahead and go over this machine first. So now this is an electric unit. Uh, it's a three wheel unit. Uh, pretty common for the forks on the front. Almost all forks on these kind of forklifts are adjustable. So you can pull these pins and slide these one way or the, the other. Uh, but then other than that, you always wanna do a pre-op inspection. Now we've already been running this machine, it's already been inspected today, but obviously anytime you're about to get on a machine, it's good to kind of do a quick walk around and make sure if you've noticed any damage or anything that might be broken or you might need to look into further. For a pre-op inspection, uh, we're not gonna do a thorough overview on today's episode here. Well, what I'll tell you, and if you've seen any of my other videos with pre-op inspections, don't get intimidated. Uh, most people feel like if they're not a mechanic or something, they can't do a pre-op. Uh, it, it's honestly common sense. You walk around, there's things that are just visual that if it doesn't look right, you need to look into it further. Uh, so let's keep looking at this machine going around it. So this machine's an electric uh, unit. And again, there's pros and cons too. You'll see propane powered uh, or electric. Uh, electric are a little bit quieter. They don't have quite as much power, uh, but they're really good if you're not running that machine like 24 hours a day. Uh, that's a good machine. Electric is a good one because it's, it's got a charge. Um, otherwise, a lot of times they can pull out these battery packs and put a new one in, but most typically you're gonna run these for eight hours or so and then charge them. Whereas a propane, you can just basically swap out a tank. So you'll see machines that are running a lot more uh, often, like many hours will usually be propane. Also, if you're you know, gonna be indoors uh, and also in a food area, they often will do electric machines because there are some emissions with propane. So it's gotta be well ventilated, things like that. Now keep coming around this machine. Now again, this, this is a stand-up rider machine. So I'm gonna go over the controls in a second, but there you'll also notice with any forklift, uh, they are almost, all of them will steer from the rear. So there's one wheel at the very back that uh, will, will turn. But there are three wheel and four wheel units. Uh, this one is a three wheel where there's one wheel right in the center that will turn. You'll also see a four wheel version that's got it on each side. Typically a three wheel is gonna have a tighter turning radius. Um, but four wheels, anytime you can have a larger footprint there, it's a little bit more stable machine. Okay, now that we've kind of done the walk around of the machine, now I'm gonna show you kind of the operator's place. Again, this is a stand-up forklift machine. So with these, generally the benefits between a stand-up or one where you're sitting, uh, first of all, you can see there's a lot of, in a warehouse, there's a lot of back and forth. Uh, with this one, all I really have to do is turn my head. Whereas if you're sitting, you've gotta be looking over shoulders and things like that. So that's why these are uh, sometimes preferential in an area where you're doing a lot of back and forth because all I'll have to do is just turn my neck one way or the other. Okay, now looking at the controls, uh, again, they're, they're fairly simple. Uh, your front panel here, this is where our key is, our emergency stop. I'm not gonna turn it on yet, I wanna go over the controls, uh, but it'll give me my battery charge when I turn it on. Uh, this is really your drive and also your forklift uh, portion there. So with this, it's gonna be forward and reverse. And you'll see how when I let it go, it'll stop in the center. Uh, that does mean it'll still roll those. So uh, that's how we're gonna manage when we wanna stop. Then you've got your controls for the forklift. This is gonna be your up and down on the machine, on the forks going up. And then you've got the little keypad here uh, with your thumb. If you pull back on it, it's gonna tilt the forks up and if you push forward, it's gonna tilt the forks down. And then you've got left and right. That'll actually slide the forks, uh, the entire piece, left or right on there. Um, other than that, you sometimes we'll get other forklifts. There can be a reach function where it'll actually put the forks out. Um, and usually there are two buttons underneath this one right here that can be for that accessory or anything else. On this machine, they're not active. Uh, that also will be, typically you'll see different types of uh, stand-up forklifts where if they have legs out further in front of them, uh, then that's where you'll have a reach function because you need to be able to reach. This machine doesn't have that. It's got a longer base behind it. 
Uh, so you don't mess, we don't need that in this machine. That's your right hand. Your left is then your steering. Uh, it's just a little knob here when you turn it. It won't do anything now, uh, but once I turn it on, it'll turn the wheel, the single wheel at the bottom. The final piece, uh, call it the dead man pedal down here. This basically is what will stop the machine. So at any point, so first of all, you have to have that down to operate the machine uh, to drive it at all. If I let off of that at all, that's when the machine will abruptly stop. So obviously, when you're doing this, you, as much as possible, that is a last resort safety. You don't, as you'll, I'll demonstrate here in a sec, you don't just want to let off of it. It will stop pretty abruptly, okay? So now, we've gone over that. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. On here. And this, you will have your foot off the pedal initially. I turn it on. There's a quick self-test. And it says uh, it's going through the system, making sure. And then I've got my battery level, and everything's good to go on there. So everything is operational. Now, I'm going to go over first the, so if I put my foot on there, you'll notice how you can hear it. That's where now it's ready to drive. So for this, if I push forward, and again, this is, you'll see now this will turn. If without that, if I just go a little bit forward like that, you'll see. And if I let go, it'll still roll a little bit. And then same thing in reverse. And if I let off, it will roll, still continue to roll. Typically, that's how you're managing your stop. You're going to pull back on that thing a little bit if you need to stop more abruptly on that. You don't necessarily want to use the dead man pedal there. And then steering it, again, if I turn it this way, it'll turn that way. And you'll kind of have to get used to that. I'm going to show you a, a little maneuver we do to kind of get used to the steering of it. And then you've got the forklift controls on here. If I push the main controls on the side there, if I push up on that, it's going to raise them. If I let go, it stops. If I pull down on this, it will bring those back down. Right there. So that's that. And then if I want to tilt, if I push down on this thumb pad, it will tilt the forks back. And if I push forward, it will tilt them forward. And then finally, you've got your left and right control right there. If I go to the left, it'll move the forks left. If I go right, it will go to the right. OK, so now let's do some driving maneuvers, and I'll show you a little bit more on the controls. OK, now we'll show a little bit of driving. The other thing I didn't mention at the beginning, there is a load plate on this. And uh, we'll show you a shot of that. You always want to know the capacities, the limits of your machine. Typically, as with all construction equipment, the higher you have those forks, the less stable your machine is. So uh, I use this a lot when we're in construction equipment, like the wheel loader. Low and tight is when you're nice and safe and solid. The higher up you are, the less stable that machine is. So you'll see that in the load plate, too, on all, on all the machines. You'll actually reduce your capacity to how much you can lift based on how high you are up. So uh, again, make sure you understand the limits of your machine that you're getting on. OK, now. Again, we're going to go over the fork controls already. So again, if I push on my right thumb, if I push up, this is what will raise the forks. Now, these will stop on their own. So if you go all the way up, you'll hear it. Generally, you usually want to try and avoid that max limit. Uh, not really going to hurt the machine. But again, if you can stop it early, generally do. Obviously, the most important part there know your ceiling, know your limits on how high you can go with those forks. Once I'm up there, I can bring this down. Obviously making sure I'm looking underneath that there's no obstructions or anything underneath it. Usually you're lowering it to, I'd say, about four to six inches off the ground when you have a pallet on there. Then the other piece there is your tilt on the fork. So if I pull back, it's going to raise them up tilt back. Uh, this is generally, I would say, when you're, if you're driving for a distance, it's always good to have those, the, you tilt up, you bring that weight in closer to your center. And then if you do have an abrupt stop or anything, you've got the back of the forks uh, is really holding that. So that's generally why you're going to want to have it that way. Uh, the other thing is, as you're picking up a pallet, if you notice that the tilting a little bit, those are your little adjustments. So pull back is back, push forward like that, and that will lower the forks. And then finally is you've got your side to side. So if I go left with this thumb pedal, uh, thumb pad, it's going to go to the, the left. If I go to the right, it's going to go to the right. Typically, you're just going to use those to make your little fine adjustments when you're trying to pick up a pallet from a rack. 
Now let's go over driving. So again, my foot is still on the dead man pedal down there. That's what's keeping this machine continuing to run. Now with driving, very, very subtle, slow, steady little adjustment. Sometimes you don't want to try muscle this. If I just push this forward just a little bit, you'll see how the machine starts slowly. The harder I go on that control, the faster that machine's going to go. And then I see if I let off, I will still roll a little bit. So that's where you're just watching where you're going. And then to reverse, going back like this. You'll notice it's a little bit confusing when you're going in reverse on knowing which way. You'll see if I turn this to the left, it's gonna turn the machine to the right. Again, I'm working off a single wheel underneath there. Each machine can be a little bit different, so that's where it's just getting used to where you're going. And then we've got that steering. Again, on this one, if I'm going forward, if I turn this to the left, and I can keep turning it, you'll see it'll turn really tight. Now you gotta understand where that pivot point is on your machine. On this, the wheels are right up near the front corner, so you're watching that. And I'll show a little pivoting maneuver we test uh, people out for new to learn. So that way is one way. If I go the other, it'll turn it the other way. Obviously the machine's not gonna turn. You do have to be giving it some forward or some reverse. You see, if I just do that right now, it's not gonna do anything. Now in reverse, it's a little bit opposite, especially with these single wheels. So if I turn this to the left, you'll see it'll actually, I'm turning to the right there. So it's a little bit opposite there, but so it takes a little bit of getting used to. The final piece, generally when you're driving down, well, let me straighten this back. So typically when you're going down a warehouse aisle, anything like that, any adjusting your movement, you'll see there is a horn switch right underneath uh, the joystick there. Normally just giving a beep to let people know that you are coming uh, one way or the other. It's just obviously you wanna have full awareness on your machine. Okay, again, to go over today, we're just gonna go over some simple driving maneuvers. Uh, I call them pivot point drills, and that's really where you just lay out some cones, and you gotta understand where the pivot point is on your machine. Uh, again, you're steering from the rear, so understanding where your tire is in the front, that is your pivot point on the machine. So the other thing with driving forward or reverse, we're not gonna pick any pallets up in this training video, but I'll tell you, it's really a little bit of comfort which way you wanna be driving forward or reverse on a stand-up machine like this. Obviously, if you have a larger pallet in front of you where you can't see over it, then you definitely want to be driving in reverse so you can see exactly where you're going. But other than that, it's, I, I would say I think it is easier to drive that direction forward if you can see fully over your pallet, whatever's there. So now you'll see I've got three cones out here. Typically, the challenge here is just trying to hug these as close as possible. So once... I get around, you can see my pivot point right in the front. I'm gonna go just around that. Soon as I get all the way around, that's where I'll straighten it out. And then same thing the other way. If you know where your machine, that front corner is, you know where that pivot point is. And then what we like to do is we put a tight one. So if you know you're trying to fit through these, again, understanding the front of your machine, and I'll go straight through there. And then also knowing I can't cut this too early because if I do, you'll notice it gets wider and I would hit anything on that side there. So this is really handy for a new forklift operator, just doing a lot of this. And then, you know, speed, just start slow. I can't stress enough with anything you do. It's about starting slow and getting more comfortable with that machine. Then what we can do is I'll show you the same thing we would do in reverse.
So again, I think it's key to just have more practice driving like that. Again, you'll the more you get in there and do those tight areas, it's always better to set up a training area where you can do that, where it doesn't matter if you hit a cone initially. For a new operator, it's really, really important. Final thing I'm gonna show is it's that dead man pedal on this. This is not something you wanna use to stop. So this is, so you'll see how if I'm going forward right now, I can go really fast. If I let off of that right now, I'm just gliding. So to stop, I pull back on it. And the same thing the other direction. I can go fast, and if I let off of it, it will just glide. That's where I'm just pushing a little bit of forward pressure. What you'll see here is if I am just going forward and I let my foot off this dead man pedal, it'll stop abruptly. And that's generally what you don't want to do. Uh, that would be just a safety if you did need to go uh, to get the machine to stop. You'd let your foot off. But generally, you want to keep that pedal down and stop with just the joystick. Okay, after that, to park the machine, pretty easy. Let your foot off. Always make sure my forks are flat. You don't obviously want them off the ground. It's a tripping hazard. Turn the key off. Then you're good to go. And that's our entry level video for a stand up forklift. Again, not an expert. Love to hear comments from any warehouse workers or anyone that uses these things a lot. Please put some comments below on tips or tricks you have learned. And finally, again, big shout out and thank you to Storm Creek Apparel here in Minnesota. They allowed us, helped us out, let us use the warehouse. Um, so again, thank you guys, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks.